Hi, welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In this video, we're going to look at using Givens rotations to compute the QR decomposition of a matrix. A Givens rotation is an elementary rotation in two dimensions of a matrix problem. And we'll look at how we can use a sequence of these elementary rotations to build the QR decomposition of a matrix. The Givens rotations method is often a little less efficient than other methods to compute the QR decomposition. However, it provides us with additional flexibility that can be useful in some cases, and we'll discuss some advantages in this video. For two indices i less than j and an angle theta, we can define the Givens rotation matrix G i comma j comma theta to have the following entries. We'll first write down that C is equal to cosine theta and S is equal to sine theta. And then we'll have that G i i is equal to C, G j j is equal to C, G i j is equal to S, and G j i is equal to minus S. We'll also have that G k k is equal to 1 when k is not equal to i or j, and G k l is equal to 0 otherwise. Hence the matrix has the following form. We essentially have the identity matrix, but in the i and j rows and columns, we have a rotation matrix of angle theta. So a Givens rotation is therefore an elementary rotation in a two-dimensional subspace of a larger space. Now let's consider an n by n rectangular matrix A, where m is greater than or equal to n. And suppose that A1 and A2 are in the ith and jth positions in a particular column of A and assume that at least one of these a's is non-zero. So if we restrict to just the i-th and j-th dimensions, then a Givens rotation g i comma j comma theta, a particular angle theta, can be applied so that our Givens rotation c s minus s c applied to a1 and a2 will give back a vector with components alpha and zero, where alpha is non-zero and the j-th component is eliminated. Alpha is given by the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared. And we could compute that c is equal to a1 divided by the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared. And s is given by a2 divided by the square root of a1 squared plus a2 squared. However, this procedure is susceptible to underflow or overflow if alpha is very small. And to see this, let's suppose that a1 and a2 were on the scale of 10 to the minus 200. And within dual precision floating point arithmetic, 10 to the minus 200 is perfectly fine to be represented. However, to evaluate these expressions for C and S, we'd have to look at the square of these terms. And that would give us terms on the scale of 10 to the minus 400, which is outside the range of exponents that can be dealt with with double precision floating point arithmetic. What would happen is that those numbers would get rounded to zero and we therefore end up with a division by zero error in these calculations. So we can avoid this with the following better procedure. Suppose that the magnitude of A1 is greater than the magnitude of A2, then we can define that T, which is equal to tan of theta, is equal to A2 divided by A1, and hence C is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus T squared, and S is equal to CT. If the magnitude of a2 is greater than or equal to the magnitude of a1, then we could define tau equal to the cotangent of theta, and that will be equal to a1 divided by a2, and hence s is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 plus tau squared, and c is equal to s times tau. And these two formulae avoid ever having this problem of squaring small numbers, and so therefore will be more numerically stable. Now let's look at performing the Givens rotation procedure to compute the QR decomposition of a dense matrix A of size m by n. We can use the following algorithm. So to begin, we'll set R is equal to our input matrix A, and Q is equal to the identity. And we'll loop over all of the columns, K, from 1 to n. And then we'll loop over all of the entries below the diagonal in the kth column, from m up to k plus 1, and we'll construct our Givens rotation matrix g j minus 1 comma j with an angle theta that will eliminate the entry ajk. 
We'll then update our R matrix according to R is equal to GR, and we'll update our Q matrix in terms of Q is equal to Q times G transpose. And this simple procedure will compute the QR decomposition. In, in general, Gibbons rotations are not as efficient for computing the QR factorization as either the Gram-Schmidt method or the Householder method. However, they're worth knowing about because they have several other advantages. And one advantage is if we look at sparse matrices. And suppose that we look at a matrix where there are only a few terms in the first column. And in this case, we could apply Gibbons rotations that would target the specific non-zero entries. And in this case, if there are only two non-zero terms, then we could eliminate them just using two Gibbons rotations, and that would be a very efficient operation. Now, another advantage for Gibbons rotations is in terms of parallelization. And let's look at this matrix that's six by six, and I've marked the terms in the upper diagonal matrix with stars, and the terms below the diagonal that we want to eliminate as yellow circles. Now, let's look at the order at which we can consider eliminating terms in this matrix. So, to begin with, we'll eliminate this term on step one, by considering the fifth and sixth rows. And after we've eliminated that term, we could eliminate the term above it in step two by considering the fourth and fifth rows. And we could then eliminate the term above it in step three by considering the third and fourth rows. But that operation will only involve the third and fourth rows. And we could therefore simultaneously eliminate this term by considering the fifth and sixth rows. And we could proceed in the following fashion. We could then eliminate these two terms simultaneously. This term, we only need to look at the second and third rows. This term, we only need to look at the fourth and fifth rows. And on the fifth step, we can eliminate three terms simultaneously. And we can proceed in the following fashion. And that will give us a substantial speed up due to parallelization. And if we have a much larger matrix, we can see that the potential speed ups are much larger here.